Hi, I'm Mark. Welcome back to Foothill Paint Fabrication. Well, we're back on the 65 Chevelle of the Malibu SS, and since we got everything painted, now we can move forward and start putting some chrome goodies back on this thing. This car was originally four-wheel drum brake with a single master cylinder, and uh, we're converting it over to four-wheel disc with a dual master cylinder and a brake booster. So uh, that's kind of what we're going to be working on today, getting that on and getting some brake lines back up front here. And that way we can move forward with some of the other stuff like getting this inner fender well back in, some of this wiring cleaned up, and then uh, kind of button up this side of the car. Then we can move on to the other side. So let's jump in here and take a look at what we're going to be putting on today. Okay, this is what came in the kit as far as the braking side for the master cylinder booster. So we have the uh, chrome booster and the chrome master cylinder. Now these didn't come in the kit originally. This was an anodized, I think, uh, 11 inch unit and just a black um, master cylinder. But uh, I mentioned earlier in another video, uh, the owner called uh, Pirate Jack, that's where all this came from, and said, hey, I'd like to substitute this part you have in stock and this part uh, for those and they willingly did it. It was a little bit a uh, little bit more cost But uh, that way he got exactly what he wanted and it was able they were able to mix and match You know the kit to what he wanted So we have the uh, the 9 inch booster the chrome master cylinder the proportioning valve the lines from the uh, Master cylinder to the proportioning valve the bracket for the proportioning valve the standoffs that go on the firewall to hold the booster away a little bit at the correct angle We've got uh, the, the wiring pigtail for the proportioning valve warning light, the brake low, low pressure warning light, and some uh, brackets here. And there's a couple extra plugs uh, in the kit, and that's because these master cylinders are for left or right side. So that's kind of a universal um, master cylinder. Now, I have had problems on, I put one of these on, uh, actually, John, the owner's uh, brother's 67 Chevelle, and... These plugs sometimes do not seat properly, so uh, they machine these down, and these master cylinders aren't always machined well, the threads, and so what happens is you start running out of threads before it seats, you know, down on the taper. So uh, you may need to fiddle with that. If yours is leaking, for whatever reason, what I did was I took and took some of the first threads away on the very tip up by the seat right up here. I just pull, uh, just took a grinder to it and sanded some of those threads away because when they tapped it, it the, the t threads didn't go deep enough and then it was bottoming out before it actually made the seal. Once I did that, sealed up no problem. So uh, that's what we've got going on here. I've got the uh, original brake lines. I've got them cleaned up. So we're going to see, uh, I know I can reuse the crossover. I'm not sure, uh, you know, which ones we're going to be able to use. We're going to have to make up some new ones. So we'll figure that out as we go. Okay, let's get started by putting the standoffs for the uh, brake booster on. Now, the original bolts for the, um, for the master cylinder had two long bolts, and they go into the brake pedal bracket. Now, the studs work fine, but these bolts are clearly too long. So I dug around and uh, found a couple of 3 8 that'll fit just fine. So let's get these on real quick. So this will point the, the uh, booster and the master cylinder up a little bit. The original master cylinder set it uh, perfectly level. So this is going to tilt it up just slightly. Okay, I pulled you in over here off the fender. So I got both brackets on and I've left them a little bit loose. They're snug, but not uh, tight. So I can jiggle them around to line up the holes for the booster because these holes down here are a little bit big. Uh, but uh, when I was test fitting everything, I found that the holes in this bracket 
were 3 8 the correct size, but the holes in this bracket were 5 16 or smaller than 3 8 So I actually had to take a drill and drill that out so uh, the booster bolts uh, studs will fit through here. Uh, I don't know how that happens in manufacturing. One's right and the other one isn't, but uh, we just had to deal with it. No big deal. So the next step is making sure the hole in the firewall is sealed. Now that's a big hole, that's where the original master cylinder went and it had a gasket on it, bolt up against the firewall, no water could get in, no exhaust gases or anything. So we wanna to try to duplicate that. But uh, when the booster sits on here, it's gonna sit here, there's gonna be a gap right here. Now they do give you a boot that comes with the kit and if we slide that to the booster just like this, it's just gonna kinda of sit, you know, and, but if we slide this boot all the way in, then it's, nothing's going to clamp that against the firewall. So my plan is to take the boot, and I'm not sure there's really no instructions for these kits uh, other than just kind of vague instructions. I'm going to slide it into the first corrugation right there, and so that should help seal it. And then I'll push this over like that, and when the booster's bolted up, It'll be just like that. When the water, rainwater, uh, you know, go through a puddle, comes across here, it won't get down inside the car, and it won't get on the rod uh, for the booster, and then run down inside the car off the brake pedal. And to ensure that it doesn't leak at all, I've got some uh, just plain old weather strip adhesive right here, and we're gonna put. I'm gonna put a bead around here, and then kind of glue that in. So I'm a real proponent of sealing cars up. I've worked on a lot of cars where, you know, even this one, there's big holes left in firewalls or floorboards and stuff like that. And for, for one thing, it's just not safe because you could be sitting in traffic for a while and uh, exhaust gases could come inside the car, which is, un, you know, very bad. Uh, you know, so you got to protect your family, you got to protect your friends and yourself to make sure that you're healthy all the time. And I've seen a lot of cars with rust underneath the carpet because, uh, you know, there was a hole somewhere that wasn't filled properly and the car's rusting from the inside out, which, you know, really is unacceptable. So I'm going to let that set a little bit and set up. Now, I don't know if you guys can see, but there's a nice little black uh, bead right there from the uh, sealant, from the weather strip sealant. And so once that's set up, that's going to be glued on there. No water can get down inside there. No exhaust gases, no smells, no nothing. So we're about ready to put the booster on here. Okay, let's see if we can get this booster on here. Just going to slide it in, try to get that rod through the hole in that boot. Feels like it just went in. Line this thing up here a little bit. There we go. Just like that. Get the nuts on, get it tightened up. Then we can reach down inside there and tighten up those brackets that go to the fire, uh, the, the brake pedal bracket. And this part will be done. We can move on to uh, getting the master cylinder on and getting some plumbing done. Okay, you may notice something a little different. Uh, the inner fender well is in. So I got the booster on and I went outside and I looked at the, the inner fender well came back in, went outside, back and forth a few times and realized this thing was going to be super tight to the booster. Now this is a 9 inch booster, uh, the, the kit originally called for 11 inch booster. If you guys are doing one of these cars, 11 inch booster is not going to fit. It has to be a 9 inch or smaller. So I can put my finger in here and that's about it. So the little knockout they put in here, it fits perfectly with this 9 inch. So uh, I went ahead and pulled the booster out of the way. Uh, shoehorn the uh, inner fender well back in there without scratching it. Um, I actually scratched the frame putting it in, but I did not scratch the, uh, the fresh paint on here, so that's good. So our next step is to, now that I've got this in, I know where all my clearances are and it's, I'm not guessing. So it would have been stupid to put all this in and then try to mount this inner fender well. So uh, we're going to put the master cylinder on with the proportioning valve, and uh, I had to do some modifications to that, and I'll show you that in a second. Okay, I got the master cylinder uh, here with the proportioning valve and the bracket and everything. The tubes are all tightened up and ready to go. If you guys aren't familiar with these kind of kits, now this master cylinder is designed for either non-boost or a boosted car. Now, if you were putting it on a car and you weren't using a, a vacuum booster, then you would, you would just 
put it, uh, put it in. The rod for, from the brake pedal is long and it goes all the way in and engages the piston. But if you're using a booster, then they send this little piece along and all it does is slides in and what that does, it extends so the, the rod will touch the uh, piston. So if you actually try to put this in without that, put the mesh cylinder on without that extension in there, this booster rod would, would not reach and you wouldn't have brakes. So uh, make sure you get that on there. And then we're just going to slide this on just like that. We're going to get the nuts in place here. and getting it all tightened up. And I'll bring you in close here, and I'll show you how close this uh, proportioning valve is getting to this inner fender well. Okay, we got the master cylinder tightened up to the booster, and the proportioning valve's on. And you can see that's uh, maybe a quarter inch clearance between that bolt and the uh, inner fender well. So what I did was this bracket, I don't know if you guys can see that inside there, that this bracket was originally just straight. It came off here and it went straight. So what I did was I bent a uh, kind of a jog in it and it it's uh, it's probably a good solid uh, half inch where I jogged it underneath the master cylinder a little bit and to to accomplish that what I did was I took the proportioning valve and I put the little tubes they come with a kit to mount it to the master cylinder and I tightened those in place and then all I did was kind of just bend the tubes over to get this to go over a half inch and that gave me the clearance I needed. Then I bent the bracket to match it, and then it mounts right here where the master cylinder connects. And so now we're on there, we're good to go, and we can start working on some uh, brake lines to get this thing all plumbed up. Okay, since we're switching from a single master cylinder to a dual master cylinder and disc brakes, uh, we have to replumb the brake lines. Now, uh, most of these kits don't tell you that, and uh, you're going to have to buy additional uh, stuff to get this plumbed in properly. So there's uh, places like inline tubes. I think they sell a complete kit uh, to do a switch from a single to a dual. And I think it was $180 to $250, depending on the kit, your car. Um, and they all come pre-bent, pretty much everything ready to go. You just put it in, which is kind of nice. But we're on a budget here. so. We don't have an extra $250 to spend. So I'm gonna go ahead and bend up all the tubes myself. Bought a kit off Amazon for 20 bucks with all the little uh, nut ends and uh, with 25 feet of 3 16 tubing. So we're just gonna bend them up myself, ourselves. So uh, what I've done here is the distribution block is right here that came off the single master cylinder and put brake fluid to all four sides, all four wheels. So I'm reusing that. I've got the rear line connected to it and that bolts to the chassis here right to the frame and that keeps it solid. So what I did was now we have two extra ports because we will not be using the two ports that went off to the front wheels. So uh, all I have to do is bend up a line to go from the proportioning valve on the back and go right in the top. And then I just went by the auto parts store and I picked up two inverted flare plugs. And on this particular car, those are 3 8 by 24 threads. Uh, inverted flare plugs, I think it was eight bucks. So we're uh, 30 bucks into parts basically to, you know, get this bit back up. So, uh, you know, that's basically the plan. Now you can go buy the kit ready to go, you know, with all the tubes and everything. I, I think there's a couple of companies that sell a very comprehensive kit that has everything you need, but most of them that I found, they just sell you a GMA body kit in this particular sense, a case where, uh, you know, you're switching from a single to a dual, you're going to have to replace your brake lines. You're going to have to, you know, bend up some new ones or buy a kit. So let's move in close and I'll show you what I'm doing. Okay, so here's what I was talking about with the distribution block, and this is where the line's connected to it. So we won't be connecting those back up, so we're going to come off of here and go right up into here and connect that, and that's going to be pretty, pretty straightforward. But I have the original uh, brake lines that connected here, and I'm using those kind of like a template, and I've got them, uh, the, brake, the flexible brake line connected right here and uh, just kind of hand-threaded in there so I can kind of figure out where it laid out of the way. And then also the other one that goes over the cross member here. And it connects back over here. So what I want to do is use most of this as my template. And what I'll do is I'll reproduce that up to about here. And then we're going to have to make, you know, a connection all the way up to the proportioning valve right here. So this goes to the uh, passenger side and the one on the bottom goes to the driver's side. 
So we're going to have to bend up a tube, come around here, go over, down, and then, you know, just follow that shape. And then the other one, we're going to come off, come down, over, and then over, and then down to that one. So uh, that's the plan anyway. So hopefully we can do this. Uh, I got 20 feet, 25 feet of 3 8 uh, brake line tubing. So I think I've got enough to screw up at least once. So hopefully we get it right the first time. Okay, here's everything that came in the kit. I think it was 20 bucks on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, it was 25 feet of 3 16 galvanized uh, steel brake line. Uh, and it came with 10 fittings, uh, flare nuts. So we have two of half inch by 20 thread, 10 of the 3 8 by 24, which is the small ones. That's the majority of the ones you're gonna be using. Uh, 7 16 by 24 thread, two of those, and then two of the 9 16 by 18 thread. I'll need one of these. So uh, that's everything I needed for 20 bucks. So it's a pretty good deal. Now you, st you still need to bend the tube. You still need to flare the tube. So luckily, uh, you know, I have a, a, bend, a bender here, and then my buddy Dave loaned me his. He, this one does a very tight radius, very nice. And he also had, which he was very nice to loan me his, uh, flare nut, double flare nut tool. Now, uh, I have a single flare nut tool and it was my father's and it's kind of old and it wouldn't have done a very good job on this, but, uh, and really you need to use a double flare nut tool for brake lines. It's just the best, better way to go. So uh, this is one from Madco, it's a super nice set. So it's gonna do a great job. If you don't have one, I don't know if you can rent one from auto parts store or you, I know you can pick one up on Amazon for $35, $40. It's a Chinese knockoff. And if you're just doing, you know, you know, 10 fittings, it'll probably do just fine once you, you know, figure it out. So we've got everything we need. I think we're gonna start on trying to make the long one first and then uh, move over to the short ones. Okay, I'm using quarter inch uh, copper tubing I had laying around. You could use coat hanger, uh, welding rod. You could do just about anything that's going to hold its shape and, you know, give you an idea of what you're going to do. Trying to just bend that tube and then it's just not going to work. You're going to end up throwing away a lot of tubing. So use something cheap. I had this copper tube laying around. I tore it out of something or it was left over from a job. So I just straightened it out and kind of made my own template. So I've got the one here that goes to the passenger side and it comes over and down, and then I use the original one that went across the cross member, I just cut the end off of it, and then I just used a vice grip to clamp them together, and then I took the hot glue gun and just kind of blobbed some hot glue on between them. Hopefully it's gonna hold it together long enough for me to get it out and use it as a template to make that extra long line. The uh, one for the, the driver's side, it just comes out here, and it goes over and down and down to where it connects to the flexible line. So I've got those two to build. Now you notice I put the uh, A-arm on and also the clutch arm in place. So that was to make sure that I didn't uh, interfere with anything. This A-arm needs to move up and down. We wanna make sure it's gonna clear everywhere, that you can get a wrench on everything you need to get a wrench on, and that uh, you know nothing's gonna rub up against a brake line and wear a hole in it. Same thing for the uh, clutch arm. It, the arm goes across here, so I wanted to make sure I had those brake lines over far, far enough out of the way so when that thing is operating, it's not going to get in the way of anything. So I'm going to go ahead and take these off and uh, try to bend them up. I'm not going to do that on camera. It's probably going to be frustrating, uh, but uh, I think I can get it done, and then I'll bring you back when, and we'll see how they turned out. Okay, quick tip to get the uh, brake line straight. So I rolled this out on the bench, or you can do it on the ground, whatever, and you just kind of clamp it at one end and roll it out. Uh, of course, it's going to spring back because, uh, you know, the metal is going to want to return back to its original shape, which was coiled. So then I make sure it's clamped to the bench real tight like this with the coil straight up and down. And then I just take my hands and I pull like a rope. And then I just kind of put a little bit of pressure on my hands and I go along almost like a roller. And you just kind of pull and grip it at the same time. And between you pulling tight and bending a little bit with your hands, uh, it comes out pretty straight. Now, not perfectly straight. They make tools just to do this, but they're pretty expensive. So I need more than this to get all the way across there. So I'm going to go ahead and just roll some more out and just pull it straight and get the longest straight piece I can get. And then I'm going to cut it to rough length and start bending. Okay, a little progress report. I got that bent. It needs to bend a little bit more right there. But I'm using these squeeze clamps, trying to kind of holding it, holding it together to the other one as I go along. And then as I get it matched up, then I put another squeeze clamp on it. 
And I'm just getting to the point now where I'm going to be transitioning over to the template I made. So it's uh, going pretty good. Been at it about 45 minutes and has haven't cussed out the tubing yet. So I'm using uh, I'm using the angle finder, and it's kind of using that as uh, to mark it on the uh, original. And then while I'm bending with the bender, then I don't have to try to hold it back up against there. I can just uh, hold up the angle finder. So and I'm using mainly the tight bender. That's Dave's, and then I have a bigger bender here that's got a little bit bigger sweep. So um, I'm using mostly the little one though, but all in all, it's coming out pretty good. And we're transitioning right to uh, my template now here, so cross your fingers. Okay, all done. Once I got that long one across the cross member here, it uh, got a lot easier. So that fits on there really well. I've got a couple of these, uh, I've got quite a few of these little uh, vinyl coated clamps right here and I'll put those down there on the frame and then one over there and then they all came out really nice it looks nice and uniform and clean and neat now I did switch over here I planned on putting it on the top of that one but with the clutch arm right there I decided to go in that, that backside one and then I just put the plug in the top so it goes over and up now and then to the rear port for the uh, rear brake. So all in all, it came out really nice. Really happy the way it looks. A little tight, but we got it to fit. And I'm sure the owner's gonna be thrilled. Okay guys, that pretty much wraps up my project for the day. What have you guys been working on? Come on, I know it's getting hot, but get out there early morning and get to work on that project of yours, car, truck, boat, motorcycle, whatever it is. Let's bust out some work on it so we can start enjoying those things instead of just working on them for years and years. And when you're done with your little project for the day, take some pics and email them to me. I'd love to post them at the end of the videos. So we got the brake booster on, the master cylinder, proportioning valve, and got everything plumbed. I'm in, uh, I'm in this thing a solid five hours to get this plumbed. Uh, I don't do brake lines very often. Uh, the biggest one I've probably done about this big with several bins in it. So this was a little bit of a challenge for me. Thank you for my buddy Dave for loaning me the uh, double flare tool and then uh, his little bender too as well. It came in handy. But uh, everything looks great. We're able to move on from this and now we can get on to some other fun stuff. Thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint Fabrication. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already and mash that bell icon so you get notifications every time I release a new video. We'll see you on the next one.